Today I'm at 4115 Studios in Nashville with James Wassum, co-founder and operations director of Gigi.me, an online broadcasting platform. James and his team are bringing performers, teachers, and instructors closer to their entire audiences, building online communities, and changing the way we view live events. I'm Tai Chi. At 19, I was a superstar, and I was lost inside. I left it all behind, switched continents, and started all over. Years later, I found myself lost again, this time in the American dream. This is a story about awakening, about living the life you were created for, about going inward and discovering the joyous and purposeful person you and I are both meant to be. This is Waking Up in America. All the way from Montana, you're here, James. Howdy. Thank you. Oh, great. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> Can I say howdy even though I'm not from Montana? Please, yeah. Oh, well, you know, I, I traveled for so long and I have fans in Croatia and Philippines and all over Europe and it was always like I would, I would play a town in North Dakota or Cincinnati, Ohio, anywhere. And I would always feel this is so beautiful, if only my, you know, my mom in Croatia could see it or my so-and-so or these fans that I really wanted to connect with. And I did a live stream um, concert and the best thing I could find was YouTube, mm -hmm. just, you know, um, because there's all these great professional platforms that are, you, you really have to be like the top, you know, 40 to afford sure. these streaming. Sure. And then I found Gigi. And I was like, yes, this is going to revolutionize the world, the music, the artists, giving us, giving me the power now to connect with us, offer these concerts. And now I am talking to you, James. <laughs> one of the, you're one of the founders. Yeah, yeah. Uh, me and a, one of my best friends. We played music together for a number of years and finally decided we needed to change the way we were approaching things and why not change it for everybody. So. Yes, thank you. I <laughs> sure. want to thank you on behalf of all of musicians and their fans. Thank you. You're welcome. Good. Pleasure. So in your own life, tell me, before your waking up moment, tell me about your background, where you come from, what was your dreams as a little boy that you dreamed of? For as long as I can remember, I wanted to be a pilot. So in my family, that, that kind of led me to the whole military route. So I was going to be, if I was going to be a pilot, I needed a college education. If I was going to get a college education, I needed to have it paid for some way. You know, we were a very blue collar family. And um, so, you know, my dad had an electrical contracting business. We worked, you know, all, as many days as we could doing that. And, and so I got to learn a lot of trade stuff that way. But I knew that if I was going to go to college, I needed a scholarship of some sort. Okay. So I put in for Air Force ROTC scholarship, ended up getting it. So I'm pursuing my dreams, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years, I've been thinking about this. And what about being a pilot? Like, I have three boys, and yeah. at one point, all three of them wanted to fly. Sure. But tell me what it was. So much fun. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's this liberating experience. It's a sense of, I don't know. Some, some people like maybe the control aspect of, of, I mean, your life is in your own hands at that rate. You know, if you're a pilot, you, uh, it's, it, you have to be in the moment. It's a very prescient thing to be doing. You have to be constantly aware and constantly in control. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it's also equally freeing and you're, you're just soaring above everything. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's an amazing feeling. And I really connected with that for some, some reason. My dad was a pilot and um, okay. so he just, you know, he flew privately and, and um, so I got a chance to experience that from a young age and really took to it. So it's the combination of freeing and being together focused mm -hmm. and I don't want to say in control, but, but yes, being present. Yeah, fully I can, present. Yeah, I kind of feel that when I drive in Europe really fast. Yeah, the Autobahn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So then what happened? Okay, so, so then you got a full scholarship mm -hmm. to the military academy. Yeah, I did. Uh, so it was ROTC. So I went to a state school in, in Montana, Montana State University. and. Um, had an awesome time. I love school. I love learning. I love all that stuff. But um, in the back of my mind, I was also a musician, and one of my other loves was playing music. And you know, it was funny when I uh, got my very first snare drum. I had to practice every day. That was part of the deal. 
So I'd practice every day, but because I didn't want to forget my dreams, I was like 12 years old and I traced this fighter jet on my snare drum oh. with a magic marker. So every time I'm playing drums, I'm staring at this jet because that's what I'm after. That's my prize, right? Well, and I've so still got the drum head. It hangs on my wall. So. Well, why, so why did you pick up, how did you pick up music? I'd been banging on stuff since I was a little kid. You know, my profile picture on Giggy is me yeah. sitting on a dining room table, you know, with a little clown drum set or something, so. Anybody in your family music, musicians? Uh, my mom, yeah, she okay. plays guitar and sings. Okay. And, and then did you go to, did you uh, play in a band or? So in high school I started, um, you know, I played in the pep band in school and that sort of thing, but then uh, uh, a friend of mine, David Boone, who's co-founder in Giggy, uh, he invited me to play music, and I thought we were just going to play like pep band songs or right. something. I didn't even know who Bob Dylan was. You know, I'm in Montana, <laughs> just stuck in the woods somewhere, right? So, um, so we start playing and, and you know do kind of the classic garage band type of stuff. And that was in the early '90s, so we were doing a lot of grunge and mm -hmm. post grunge type yes. stuff. So, yeah, yeah. It, it was a lot of fun. I loved playing drums. It was an emotional release for me. You know, being a teenager, you got to relate to something and, and playing drums was a very physical thing, but also just you know, a raw expression. So here you are set to be a pilot who drums on the side, because that's two passions mm -hmm. that you're living out. And you're living a dream in college. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, go Christmas break. After my first semester, I go play some shows in Spokane, Washington, the big city. Okay. And uh, so from being from Montana and going to from a place of 2,000 people to 250,000 people, that's a pretty big shift. Yeah, I'd say so. So to me, I'm like, oh, this is a big time, right? So we do a few shows. We actually got this really weird surprise following there. All this stuff happens in the spread of one week, and you're just like, oh, what's going on? And I'm 19, you know, so my emotions are more exaggerated than maybe they are today. But um, so I'm feeling all this stuff, and I go back to college. I get ready to start my first, uh, my second semester back at school. And um, I, I went back early, started my job for a couple days at the pretzel stand I worked at. And um, couldn't sleep for three nights, didn't eat very much, and was just thinking about what am I going to do here? Because in the back of my mind and in my heart, I was being pulled in this music direction. I was like, it is totally irrational. It doesn't make sense. I've got a full scholarship. I know what I'm going to do 20 years from now. I'm going to retire. I'm going to be a pilot. I'm going to have this military family. And it's been your stuff. dream for all these yeah, years. For years. And you're only 19 at this point. Yeah. So I um, made the tough decision. It was, uh, it was equally tough and equally easy. It was, it was one of those things where I probably knew what I really should have done or needed to do. Um, but it, it was that logic of getting to that place and saying, I am committing to it. Was I going to go ROTC and pilot and fulfill that dream? Or was I going to follow a particular passion that may have been fleeting as a teenager? Who knows? You right. know, you, you, you're kind of conflicted. So I finally decided I walked up to the lieutenant colonel's desk, gave him the salute, and said, uh, I'm checking out and I moved to Spokane, Washington the next day. <laughs> Packed up the drums and headed out, and, and um, six months later I got my first uh, bill from the, um, I had a student loan that I had for like room and board or something. I had an academic scholarship, but I had to pay room and board. So that reminded me that, yeah, I had this other life. In just six months, I was just so many things changed. What did you, so you woke up, you said, okay, I have to be true to yourself. Yeah, it was it was one of those things where the outside around you is this turmoil and you have all these voices speaking into your life and saying do this, do this, do this. And whose voices? Well, it's it, I guess it's more for me it was kind of a cultural thing. Of course, the the uh, what I'd grown up with, um, what I knew to be right at the time, right. um, what I felt was society directing me in a certain path of, of stability and you know all these different things we we strive for we think we strive for um, but on the inside uh, there there was this peace somewhere there I wasn't sure what it was all about but I knew there was something that I needed to really 
push through and follow. I didn't know how to do that, but part of that decision making process was just making a decision and going for it. So you're <laughs> out in Spokane and yeah. you just had, you just left your path to a successful career and now you're a drummer. Yeah, yeah. and uh, A rock drum, rock star, right? Drummer kind of. Yeah, yeah. Is that what yeah, we were playing alternative rock, indie rock, and then uh, I got into playing some ska and, uh, and some... I ended up moving to Seattle a couple years later and, and kind of moving around in that, but being, being A, young, you know, 19, 20 years old, and B, a drummer. Uh, we have a certain stigma associated with drummers <laughs> oftentimes. I hope I buck that trend. But, um, you know, so I have my little hatchback and I'm throwing all my drums in there and everything. And I remember living off of Top Ramen, of course, what well, college kid hasn't done that. <laughs> Yogurt cups, you know, the 50 cent yogurt cups or whatever. And I remember pulling up to a gas station, putting, literally digging through and putting 25 cents worth of gas in my car to get home, you know. And it, it, I ended up getting a girlfriend and realizing there's more to this than just my, you know, playing drums. You know, I need to get a job. I need to, so, so society's kind of, confines come crashing back into you, you know, after six months of, of scraping by and living on that high of, I mean, I was physically shaking right. for a good three months after making that decision. It was, it was just like life changing. Because I'm, I'm sh I mean, were there any people that would say to you, because I know in my story, you know, when I left my super successful career, there are plenty of people that would look at me and say, you're so stupid. What did you just do? Why would you throw such a beautiful career for what? For now putting 25 cents of know, gas right. to get home? Right. How did you feel in those moments? Um, that was definitely there. I had plenty of voices looking at me uh, and saying, what are you doing? You know, well, you, you, you had it. You had the golden egg right in your hands. You know, why didn't you just stay on that track? And um, I don't know. There was something inside of me that was just at complete peace with that decision, and I can't explain it. I, I, even today, after thinking about it years and years, I can't fully explain what that mm. is, but you know it when you feel it. But you honored that. Mm -hmm. You honored it, and you, you, like, you, you didn't listen to the voices on the in, outside. Mm -hmm. You honored that piece on the inside. And it, it now, it opened the path to you, and we're gonna get into it, what you do now, and how you give back from that place. I think if I would have chosen the other track, um, doing the pilot thing, I, you know, I, w I would have done just fine. You know, I, I, I still think personality-wise and engagement-wise, I, I think I would be totally content in that track. But even just the way you said it, just fine, is not as right, the same not as, <laughs> here is James from Gigi, okay, who's changing the world. Yeah, yes, I, yeah, I, I see where you're going with that. I guess, um, you know, it's, it's where do you find that passion? Where do you connect with that? Probably what's become more and more clear, and really this is only in the last few years that it's solidified for me, because I've, I've made several of those turning points, if you will. I've left jobs and gone on the road to tour. I've, I've had this love affair with music and being on the road and doing jumping off of cliffs, you know, just making these decisions that get you out of your comfort zone. But you've got to follow that piece, you know, and, and so I realized that that's probably the expression of my passion and is in doing those things. And, and with starting Giggy and really seeing uh, a need for how, thing, how people connect with each other and how, how artists relate to their fans and fans relate to their artists and what my experience was playing music, being on the road as a struggling uh, you know, musician, but, but let's face it, it's not a, you're not a struggling musician or a starving artist necessarily, you're a starving business person uh, or an artist trying to be a business person. Yes. And that's, that's really the, the transition that I think we fail to define properly mm -hmm. because we go from being passionate about our craft and being the technician in our craft, whether it's a singer, whether it's a drummer, whether it's a pilot, it doesn't really matter what that is. Um, but then you realize, oh, if I'm going to make a living out of this, if I'm going to engage with the people that love me and want to support me, how do I do that successfully? Yeah, that's, 
and, and that's what Gigi is. It's a platform, and I don't think we explained what Gigi yeah. dot me is. Yeah, so um, what we did is we, you know, from years of being on the road and touring, you realize, you know, you know this as well as anybody, it, it's, uh, it's hard work, first mm -hmm. of all, it's not just a walk in the park. And it's not and glamorous, as people no, think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, picture showing up to this, yeah. this A-list venue, right? <laughs> and you walk in in your sweatpants, you've been on the road for 12 hours. I mean, that's, that's glamour for you, you know? That's why you have to wear sunglasses, right? <laughs> the bags under your eyes, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. It's hard. Yeah, it is hard. And, and you're giving so much, mm -hmm. you know, for, for me to go on stage and to perform and to, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're an entertainer. Yeah, you're a storyteller, you're an artist, you're all these things. But at, at some level, you're just an entertainer, right? Um, that, that's kind of the, 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 the peg society puts you in that, you know, shelf on the wall or whatever. And so you're expected, just by default in that position, to be effusive, to give a lot of energy, and that's tiring. That's a yeah. lot of hard work. But then to go on the road and make a living doing that, that's a totally different paradigm, right? I mean, you've got this component. Okay, that's fine and good. Great for the hobbyist or whatever. That's fine. But then you try to merge the business side of it together, and you try to make a living doing it. And some are better than others at it, and sometimes you have to spend years perfecting that balance and figuring out how that works and building your audience and learning how to communicate and how to manage all the details of going on the road. And it's very expensive to go on the road and tour. So, you know, as, as technology has moved forward, as our comfort level using it has uh, advanced, uh, we saw a really big opportunity in the live streaming space to say, hey, why don't we use this technology to allow artists to connect with their fans around the world, wherever they are, and to do it, you know, whether they're at their home, the beach, whether they're on tour and want to let their fans join them on right. tour, you know, you, 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 can, you can remove that barrier of place and geographic location and say, join in from anywhere. It's still a live experience. It is. You know, we, we, we've definitely want to be clear that we're not trying to go the YouTube route where it's like, yeah, put your videos up, everything's on demand and this and that. There's still value, high value in the live connection. Yes. There's something different about it and, and there's an energy. I mean, we have, we allow live chats during the shows and there's an energy in that chat room. Yes. We've had family reunions happen in there. We've had people connect that hadn't been connected for years and, across continents. And it actually, I find it's even more intimate than in a venue setting where I can't possibly, you know, um, you, I mean, it's too big. And right. after the show, I'm going to go backstage. I mean, I, I do go, you know, sign CDs and stuff, but this is even more we can connect. Um, I think it's easy. It's, I mean, like you said, it's, it's hard work and this is, uh, allows yeah. us that connection. There's a lot of these colliding perceptions, you know, that the artist is, uh, perceiving one thing and it's that alter ego perceiving others perceiving you sort of thing and it's it's trying to figure out how you live within that sphere but do it in a genuine way and how do you be more real without trivializing everything mm. you know that that's the fear that that artists would have if you're used to doing you know produce shows you, you spend a lot of time producing an album all this stuff well, does it make any sense to record something on my smartphone and then, then send it out to the world on SoundCloud and say, yeah, this, this, is, this is the raw cut, you know? That some artists really engage with that and they really appreciate that, but others not so much. And we, we like to have this, we like to hold something back. There's this facade almost that, that we want to maintain. And I don't think that that's necessarily a problem. I think the artist and the fans both can can interact with each other as long as everybody understands what the engagement level is supposed to be. But we find that a lot of artists and fans, at least what I see, is that you're looking for more of that personal engagement. And, and you, you do know that this person is not just what's on the billboard or the magazine or the album cover or... or their Facebook page. I mean, it's it's not everything that we always present to the world. You know, it's yeah. it's deeper than just that, and, and that's I, what live can really transcend. Yes, and I love that. That's why I want to thank you again for for giving 
giving the world this opportunity, you know, to the opportunity to to um, to to be more of who we are and have the opportunity to say, look, let's connect on a, a intimate level, even across the oceans, yeah. even especially now when we're getting so detached. Yeah. And you know, like places like this. This is a studio, uh, forty-one fifteen in Nashville, and um, I did a, an event here with Scott Malva Hill. It is a great place. So, if you guys in Nashville, this is a place. It and is beautiful. Yes, and so it's Gigi Me, mm -hmm. and people if they want to connect with you, they can find you. Uh, yeah, you can find me online, and of course. Um, greatchurchsound.com that's yes. another way to find yes, me great so <laughs> so Important. either of those yeah and and you know if it's not music you're into streaming and things like that um, you know, again we're facilitators for the technology so uh, whether it's an education event nonprofit anything like that we help out with the streaming side and bringing that community aspect together music uh, is the greatest connector like it said. really is and now as you're building communities that's a part yeah. Same piece, isn't it? Yeah. So I think um, me being a drummer, it's kind of tough to, to play anything in person, just kind of on the spot without uh, <laughs> feeling a little awkward. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm a facilitator in so many ways. And being a drummer, you are a facilitator for other things around you. So, uh, but um, we can certainly play one of the music videos that uh, my best friend David Boone, you know, has put together. We, we've worked together for... Uh, over 20 years playing music together and, and he's done some pretty incredible work over the last few years and so there's a song called Tail Lights um, mm. that we can feature and, and really it's, it's, it's a story about um, in the music video to see a couple coming together and, and engaging with each other in a very real and genuine and human level and it, it's exciting to see that in the background of this story of this song and, and experiencing the fullness of life and not worrying about your social status, your economic mm -hmm. status, your you know trials and travails from yesterday. It's living now, it's living today, it's living with what you have and, and living a full life with that. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you for bringing us all together. It feels like that's, that's the story of, that you bring to our world. Thank you. Happy to do it. Really Thank you. Thank you. Waking Up in America shows as much as we are, please share them with your friends. I know there's many people who are waking up to the life, to living the life we're created for, but there's always more. There's always that friend that could really benefit from some of these stories featured here. Join us in our online community and um, come to our website, wakingupinamerica.net. Uh, sign up on our mailing list so that we can really uh, support each other and uplift each other in order to show up who are meant to be and make the difference in our world. 
Thank you so much.